Good afternoon everyone and a warm welcome at the second Kinepict Academy live webinar. First of all, let me introduce Professor Bolaj Neves, who is the head of the Department of Interventional Radiology at the Semmelweis University. Yes, and he is one of our first users, the first users of Kinepict Medical Imaging Tool, and we have multiple successful clinical uh, trials um, validations behind us. And I am Szabó Csosvát, founder and CEO of Kinepict. At Kinepict we develop statistical data analysis algorithms to improve image quality. And we improve the image quality to an extent that if you don't need this extra image quality, then you can use one third of the X radiation that you would need for a DSA, but still get the uh, uh, image quality that you would receive with the DSA. And this technology is built in, in the Kinepic Medical Images, Imaging Tool, which is a CMART um, tool. And um, F, we, the Kinepic Medical Imaging Tool is also approved by the FDA for image quality improvement. Now, our agenda for today is that first we watch a 15 minute video um, of two interventions performed by Professor Nemesh, and then we will have a discussion and question session. I encourage everyone to ask questions and make comments by typing them into the chat window of the GoToWebinar software. And now let's watch the video. In these two cases, we treated patients with chronic kidney disease and uh, depleted uh, renal function. The first patient underwent left common femoral artery angioplasty. Uh, she was a 16-8-year-old female patient with a medical history of obesity, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, smoking and left common femoral artery and arterectomia. The patient was admitted with a 50 meter claudication and the diagnosis revealed CFA and osteolefemoral artery lesion, which means the patient developed wrist stenosis. Due to the severe obesity, uh, right brachial access was used and we dilated uh, the lesion with a 5 by 80 millimeter diameter drug eluting balloon. Uh, this is the first step, getting access through the right brachial artery. We didn't use ultrasound in this case. The patient had a very good palpable pulsation at the brachial artery. First we introduced the PTA catheter uh, just to engage the descending aorta. And uh, we used the long hydrophilic thermo wire. Which was, uh, which was advanced into the descending aorta. And it was subsequently replaced by a 5 by 90 centimeter long introducer sheath. That is the second step. Another option would be getting access through the right femoral artery, but because of the obesity, we try to avoid it. This is the diagnostic angiogram using CO2. We use the left oblique rotation just to clearly identify the osteo part of the deep femoral artery. As you can see, at the right is a DVA image, there is a high grade stenosis at the osteum of the deep femoral artery and another region at the common femoral artery. The guide wire is already in the deep femoral artery. Uh, 
And the next step is advancing the dragon hunting balloon, which will cover the two lesions. It was 5mm by 80. And the balloon inf inflation right now, as you can see on the fluoroscopic image on the left side. And we try to reprogram the CO2 injector. And after one minute we deflated the balloon and we did a control angiogram which provided a good result. The patient already had her one month follow-up and uh, her walking distance extended to several hundred meters. The next patient was a 70-year-old female with obesity, epilepsy, cabbage, and right-sided femoropopital angioplasty with stenting that happened uh, one year before the index procedure. The patient was admitted with a left-sided 10-meter dysphagia and uh, the earlier diagnostic revealed multiplex source segment significant femoropopital stenosis. We did a right common femoral artery puncture because brachial was too far away. We crossed over to the other side and using a 5 by 60 millimeter balloon we dilated the lesions in three steps. This is the right femoral access. To engage the left uh, iliac system, we used the four French contracatheter, and uh, when we engaged the left common iliac artery, we advanced the 118 centimeter long hydrophilic wire. This is just the first step, uh, the short introducer sheath. This is the portion catheter. And the wire is in the SFE. We removed the four French catheter and the sheath, and it was replaced by a 6x45. destination sheath as you can see yeah, and you can see the patient is obese so uh, one of the problems with these patients that uh, you need higher amount of contrast material with increased radiation and sun, sometimes the image quality is far from the optimal. Not to mention if you have to use oblique rotation like in this case. Again, a left oblique rotation just to identify the deep femoral and the superficial femoral artery just to try to find the appropriate angle to see the proximal part of the SFA. Every time when you see the, the big screen, on the left side you see the DSA 
generated by GE and on the right side you will see the DVA image generated by the Kinepin software. And generation time, as you see while you see generating written on the screen, it takes like less than two seconds and you will see the calculated DVA image. Yeah, unfortunately, if you use CO2, usually you use, use higher frame rate, and that means uh, more time for post-processing because you have to browse through several images and try to find the appropriate mask and image just to have the suppression. You have to summarize several images just to have a good contrast. So we need a dedicated person who is sitting in front of the of the workstation and uh, just uh, does the job. Uh, if you use the software, it takes like two seconds and it's no more person just uh, clicking on the mouse over and over. Yeah, one lesion was already dilated, but as you can see there are more uh, proximal calcified lesions and another distal lesion at the bottom of the screen. So that's what we expected. We didn't want to use a long balloon like uh, 200 mm or 240 because uh, I was afraid that it will induce uh, dissection at uh, non diseased areas. So we tried to focus only on the stenotic parts. And unfortunately, that requires more ballooning, more radiation, but maybe less chance for stenting, which I'm not a big fan of. So if it's possible, I try to avoid stenting. I use long ballooning up to three uh, minutes. So this is the proximal part of the superficial femoral artery. And when you see these side-by-side -side comparisons, as Professor Nemes said, the DSA is the result of a heavy prose processing, while the DVA is just as it comes. Yeah, and less noisy. The problem with these patients is uh, usually a very noisy image if there is a big patient on a table. Again, removal of the balloon catheter, another control image which looks pretty good. I can see some dissection proximally. So back and forth, again, we, in, we introduce the, the balloon catheter. And this is the distal, this is the distal lesion. So this software calculates several different types of, of images. We collectively call them DVA, but these could be um, different um, from statistical data analysis point of view. And you can just cut, shift between or change between these images by clicking. These are calculated basically simultaneously and offer you several possibilities to view your image the blood vessels. Yeah, you can click and pick up whatever you are more familiar or more happy with. In some, some circumstances it seems that one image might perform better in some than the other. Or maybe it's also a matter of personal preference, which is preferred by a doctor. So ballooning, ballooning over and over. Using CO2 we saved a lot of contrast material injection. Of course, some was needed because we wanted to see the dissection proximally. So my approach is uh, do long dilation and in case of dissection, just do several rotations. And uh, if it's not needed, I, I, I do not want to do stenting. After the successful procedure, of course, you could see the patient's size 
we wanted to achieve hemostasis with an NGO-sealed device that's what I'm introducing at the end of the procedure and actually I met this patient a few weeks ago I did an ultrasound and everything was fine on the left femoral artery nice pulsation no increased uh, speed in the SFA all along so the patient was a, had a very very limited walking distance and again she was able to walk three to four hundred meters this this image shows um, our present users and um, scientific collaborators in three countries in Austria, Germany and Hungary and for more information you're more than welcome to contact us if you have any questions but as I said we are open for questions and comments now as well and I want to thank you as well for all the collaborations we are doing. Thank you for the opportunity. So please if you have any comments or questions then ask now. Good, so we have the first questions. Um, in the previous webinar, we saw a Siemens device. Is there a major difference between the Siemens and the GE systems we saw now? Can the Kinepic software be used with both? So, yes, um, as, as these movies um, illustrate, you can use them with both, both devices. Um, how is the quality improvement of the um, this is the, This is the first time we use the, uh, the G because usually our work is done on the Siemens machine. This is our hybrid unit and we just wanted to try out how does it work with the Kinepic software. We had no problem at all. I, actually, my, from my uh, point of view, I have the same thing. So I wait like two seconds and on the last screen there will be an image appearing and which is a calculated image. So from my point of view, it works pretty well. I don't know how difficult it is to interpret into the GE machine, but that's not my business, not the company. <laughs> <laughs> so yet another question. Why is it necessary to use iodinated contrast material at the end of the intervention? Or did you use not only at the uh, intervention? Yeah, actually. How did you use that? We didn't use it at the first case because the patient had restenosis. Uh, we did a balloon, there was no dissection. It wasn't a calcified vessel because it was a restenosis and that contains uh, uh, increased intimal layer, intimal thickness. Uh, the second case was a calcified with several stenosis and the patient developed a dissection at the proximal part of the SFA. So uh, as you could see, the patient was large. The image quality because of that wasn't really good. So. Unfortunately, CO2 provided much more better images, but I still wanted to be sure, uh, can I leave the dissection behind? So I did uh, rotations and I did angios with urinated contrast material. Uh, at the end of the procedure, as you can see, at the, at the beginning, uh, there was like 55, 56 ml of contrast, urinated contrast material, which wasn't really injected into the patient, which is because it included the amount of contrast material which was already in the inflator. So the actual, uh, we had four or five iodinated contrast run using less than 40 ml of contrast. We had several other runs with CO2 just to find the appropriate uh, balloon position. So at the end of the procedure, I use it sometimes when I'm not sure about uh, the vessel uh, after the procedure, if it's a, if there is a possible dissection, I need higher resolution, better image quality. Sometimes it can be avoided, as it happened in the first case. Sometimes cannot be, but actually we used less contrast. I expected for this kind of case when we did four balloon dilations to use at least uh, 80 minimum 80 milliliter of urinated contrast. Instead of that, we used less than 40. Thank you. And the next question, um, can we use it in GE? Yes, this was um, this operation was done on a GE Innova uh, system. Is there a technologist needed in the control room to assist with the software? No, there's no extra personnel needed to, 
to um, get this running. It's a computer outside in the in the um, preparating room, connected to the X-ray machine, taking data on DICOM standard port, providing image data through standard image um, DVI, let's say, um, transfer, and then you get the images right away in the operating room on your big screen. Uh, could you please reiterate the key pros and cons, DVA versus DSA? It's that both are calculated. The DSA generated originally by the original um, setup, manufacturer setup, um, is also there. We don't interfere with the works of that one. We only provide yet another extra image which <coughs> um, has higher image quality. We have several publications which show how a more detailed statistical analysis provides better image quality than simple subtraction with what is behind the DSA. Now, you see the DSA <coughs> during the as you are standing on the x-ray panel, right? Yeah. Probably I should hand it over to you. I don't want to watch, but you, you did it, the uh, operations. From my point of view, I, I, I cannot see big difference between the SCD except, except uh, two factors. Once DVA provides much more higher contrast uh, because the noise ratio is less than for DSA. Another thing, if you use CO2 with DSA, that's the problem. Usually you, you need higher frame rates, four or even higher. I, in my Siemens unit, I think it's uh, the, the company offered to use the seven and a half frames per second, which means it increased the amount of radiation. Because you need several images, the, the problem with the CO2 that it's not passing through the screen uh, or at the, at the area in the vessel, First bubbles come, after that you can see that the vessel is partially or fully filled with CO2 and after that some more bubbles. So that's why you have to summarize several, sometimes 10 to 20 images, just to have a good overall view of the whole length of the vessel. Uh, if you use the software, we use like 2 frames per second, which is a much more uh, lower uh, radiation and we have better image quality. So from my point of view, if I'm going to use CO2, we, we would go for, for Kinepit. Another factor with, uh, with angiography that uh, now we do a little study and we decrease the radiation, uh, we could reprogram the Siemens unit and we use like a 70% lowered radiation and we have the same image quality uh, with the software. So in the longer run, I think it's a very, very important factor you can decrease the radiation, which is a very, very impo important aim nowadays. Go down the radiation as low as possible, and but you want to keep the image quality. With the software, I think it's possible. Basically what happens, um, DVA provides better signal-to-noise ratio and also better image quality visually and diagnostically. If you don't need this, because you see all the images you want to see anyways, you can trade that extra image quality in for less um, radiation dose or less contrast agent or using CO2 instead of the iodinated contrast agent. That's what's behind all this. But in some applications you might want to see even small, smaller vessels and then in that case you can use the higher image quality. Then another question. What about detail below the knee and below the ankle image quality? So as we published earlier with Professor Nemesh together, um, the image quality enhancement in these regions for the small vessels is even better yeah. than for the large vessels. Yes. That's Ex excellent image quality. Sometimes when I do uh, femoropopital or even BTK uh, procedure and I do it transpedally, uh, I like CO2 because I can go up with a, with a support catheter, an 18 support catheter, and I can do retrograde angiogram with CO2 because, uh, because you can inject CO2 easily, but you cannot really do it with urinated contrast material because of its thickness. So it, it makes a big difference. Image quality is not a problem. There is only one area when image quality can be limited, and that's the abdominal area because of the bowel, because of the moving uh, gases in the bowel. That's the problem. 
So if, if you can prepare the patient with the appropriate diet, you can do a very good image quality at the abdomen area. Uh, if it's not, sometimes we have to do several rotations just to play the trick with the bowels, but uh, sub uh, inguinally, the image quality is kind of comparable. Thank you. And what is the cost of a, a single installation? Wow. Um, the list price is um, 30 um, thousand euros per year um, for for the license of the software. Next question: Could you tell us some word about the color code? What is mode and what can be used it for? Yeah, um, the color coded DVA is basically the DVA image with the equivalent. Um, visibility of the blood vessels, but the blood vessel is colored according to the arrival time of the bolus. So different colors in the image indicate the different arrival time to, the, to that part. This way you can see, for example, um, determine which is the dominant artery feeding, for example, a tumor that you want to um, um, embolize. But supposedly you might need a higher frame rate for that, just to have the difference. We, we can calculate these images even from this 2 frames per second. Mm -hmm. And um, the resolution in the um, representation of the arrival time is better than the 2 frames per second. But of course, if you want better time resolution, you need better, um, 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 higher frame rate also. But since you can reduce the x-ray dose per, per frame, yeah. um, the x-ray dose won't be more than the, with the DSA, but you still get the better image quality plus enhanced time resolution. Okay. So that's, that's the trick. Then, yeah, how, long, how long does it take to post-process a DVA image? Well, um, you can actually do some post-processing on the DVA and, and the software allows you to, to set um, contrast and, and brightness or invert the image uh, if you prefer white on black um, background or vice versa. But all those images that you saw here and were used by Professor Nemesh during these operations were not post-processed, were they as they come um, by default provided by the software. But we can do pixel shifting. You, you can do a pixel shift if necessary. The that patient as well. is, is moving, we can do the same things, the same post-processing, but usually all of the DSA machines has. Yes, we have yet another question? No, yeah. Are the results of the CO, CO2 obtained from manual injection? No, actually... This it was an angiodroid programmable injector. Yeah, it's commercially available, we bought it and we, but we bought it, we didn't even know finally how we use it. Uh, we used it without uh, the Kinepic at the beginning and uh, yeah, there was one person clicking all the time on the mouse, uh, try to obtain the best image after every angiographic run. After the Kinepic image it is much more useful because we do not have that many person in the, in the OR just to do the clicking and the post-processing. So it's an automated uh, professional unit, not hand ejection. More questions. Um, can you give us some numbers regarding dose reduction, please? Of course. Um, so <clears throat> if, if we compare DSA to DVA, you obtain the same image quality with one-third, as Professor Nunes said, one-third of the um, X-ray dose, then you'd get with, with the DSA, which is 100% um, um, X-ray dose. Although we have a prospective study now. Yes, um, that's why we, we could program our machine and we can select, select a special software and special program, angiographic program, just for the DVA and that's 70% reduction and not that's what we are comparing to, to other imaging uh, methods. And uh, actually, it's, we are not sacrificing anything. Image quality is the same. 
wonder why the operator is unprotected during DSA acquisition. I mean extra protection. If you can tell me what do you mean on extra protection, maybe I can answer it. Operator unprotected. Shielding. Oh, yeah, sure. I, I, I was a visitor. I was a visitor in, in this room. It's just not my, my main focus working in the hybrid unit. I don't know why I didn't use it. I think it was somewhere around. Uh, no idea. Cannot tell. I was just a guest over there. Sorry for that. You should be very careful. I'm more careful than 20 years ago. Thank you. That's a useful comment. Thank you very much. See no more questions coming up. So thank you for your participation and have a nice day. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Goodbye.